Hey, Clemens. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. That's good. Yeah. It's, hey, uh, folks. Hello. Uh, this isn't your first time on the call, is it? Mine? No. Yeah. Not. <laughs> okay. I didn't think so. Okay. <sighs> I have to say today I have lacked motivation in general. I think that was that is all COVID induced. COVID um, situation induced, not COVID induced. But you know what's funny is I, I was looking uh, during, earlier in the week I was looking at uh, the agenda, you know, trying to get it ready and stuff, and I realized we don't have a whole lot to talk about, especially when it comes to PRs and stuff. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out if it's people are just really, really busy with other things. They're with all the stuff going on. They're just exhausted. As you said, you know, you have a lack of motivation right now or whether it's something a little more serious, like people aren't as interested in these topics anymore. I don't think it's that last one, but I, I'm starting to wonder and worry a little. I, I, think, I think this is just a weird, weird situation that we're all in. Yeah. Um, hey. and, and and of course this is this is not as um, this is probably not quite as exciting as cloud events per se is so it is I think those topics are becoming a little bit more more niche maybe so, hey Eric hey Tommy good morning hey. hey yeah so one of the things I was gonna do and I, I apologize I actually meant to to do this to try to force some discussions is to really go back and read both the latest specs and basically just identify all the holes that I think there are there. And that will force either people to sign up to do work or, you know, give myself work to then open up PRs to put initial draft proposals out there to fill those holes and force some discussions yep. that start going. So, but I didn't get a chance to, so I apologize. Yeah, I'm always behind the work. Yeah. Hey, Christoph. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Uh, Heinz, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. Hello, and is that Mr. Mitchell? Yes, it is. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, David. Hi, good morning. Who is VV? Sorry, that's uh, me, Doug. It's uh, Vinay Venkatraagun. Hey. Hey, good morning. Wait a minute. That's not Vlad, is it? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. This. Yeah, I do. Uh, this is Vinay Venkatraagun. Oh, Vinay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Thank Sorry. You. Oh, <laughs> I am so bad with names, but that one I can remember. It, it just, I just couldn't hear it the first time for some reason. No worries. Thanks. All right. Hey, Nick. Hi, dog. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. Doug, do you think we will have like five to 10 minutes today to uh, do the demo of some SDK testing? Sure, do me a favor, stick it in the agenda. We'll do, we'll do. Thank you. All right, hi, Dustin. Dustin, are you there? Hey, sorry, I'm here. Hey, hello. And Thomas, are you there? Yeah, just Hello. fine. Yep. Thomas, you've been here before, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, Klaus. Hey, Doug. Hey, R.I. Hey, hey. One of these times, I'm just going to type R.I.P. and that's going to be bad, but it. No, it's my email address is R.I.P. I really don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, might be the easiest way for me to remember it. Hey, Mike. Morning.
Hey, Colin. Morning, Doug. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's a nice rainy day here in Raleigh. I love rain. Uh, I think better than it. This is just if it's a really cool, huge thunderstorm that just shakes the whole house. I love those. <laughs> I know. Foreign for you, California folks. Uh, hey, Lance. We have not had rain in Germany for like two or four weeks. Really? Yeah. Do you guys ever go um, in a situation where you have like droughts and you have to like think about water rationing? Yeah, well, not wa water rationing, but it's a drought, yes. Yeah, interesting. We have some fire danger here in Switzerland as well. Yeah. We're not supposed to do fire outside. There's, there's, there's a, there's a this pretty large forest burning in Holland just right, you know, oh. a few, few, few kilometers away from here. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, it's three after. Let's go and get started. Last check. Uh, Christian, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Morning. And Kent. Yep. Morning. Kent, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks. Excellent. All right. And I see Scott. Yes, sure, I hear you. Good. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, just a reminder, Clemens, you took an AI to write up your proposal for schema registry stuff. And all right, community time. Anything from the community people would like to bring up? All right, not hearing any. So um, in terms of us becoming a real full-fledged SIG, uh, I did put the formal proposal out there to not actually do that and rather have us just move as a working group under the SIG app delivery. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from the TOC to see what their official position is on that. I think I just put the request out there yesterday or the day before. So uh, it might take a while for the TOC to, to notice that. <clears throat> but I'll let you guys know how that goes. I, um, I don't see any real problem with it. Other than I think some people may think serverless is worthy enough of its own uh, SIG, but no one seems to be able to come up with a really good definition that won't be too contrived. So it doesn't really matter in the end. All right, uh, no SDK call this week. Does anybody from the SDK teams want to mention anything in terms of what we did on last week's call? Because I cannot remember. Okay, not hearing any, nothing too exciting then. We can move forward. Um, is Timur on the call? No, I don't see him. Okay, so I don't think there's anything update from the workflow then. So let's jump into our PRs and stuff. Um, okay, first one. I don't think this one is controversial, but I wanted to bring it to people's attention to see if they have any concern about them doing a protocol binding for Pulsar. Anybody have any concerns with that? We have, since we have Kafka, we can have Pulsar. It seemed like a good thing to me. I just wanted to make sure that, that I didn't want to, because if, if we had some concerns with it, I didn't want them to go off and do all the work just to have us come back and say, no, that was a bad idea. I, I think we had we had a discussion um, a while ago about Pulsar, and uh, there wasn't so um, well-developed community, I would say, but that has clearly changed. So yeah, if, uh, if uh, Kafka has a binding, then Pulsar should also have a binding. Okay. Any other comments from anybody else? Why not? Say that again? Oh, I said, why not? Okay, why not? I thought you said, or not. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Just, just maybe Perfect. a quick one. Since, yes. Uh, okay. There used to be Kafka, but now uh, also Pulsar, uh, Pravega, and a few other systems. So uh, they sh do share common aspect of having records, key, uh, partition, and so on and so forth, and headers as well. So perhaps it can be changed to generic specification for Kafka-like systems, and include Kafka, Pulsar, uh, Pravega, and others. Yeah, but Interesting. They're, yeah, but they're all different, right? Because it, because because I think if you talk to the Pulsar people and they and you tell them whether they're Kafka like they will say no. They will say we have a much better architecture, which is true. So, I, I would I would love I would love for everybody for all of those folks to go and adopt AMQP, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then that problem would go away. And that's actually a discussion that I'm 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 opening I'm about to have with the Pravega folks, but. Um, yeah, I think as long as, as the, the, those products are different, 
Um, and if there is, if they are under the umbrella of an open source organization, I think that's part of the criteria that we have, then yeah, they should. Um, so Provega would, actually Provega doesn't meet the criteria yet, um, but Pulsar clearly does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if you, if you want to make a comment in there, mentioning that to them, and maybe they can think of a way to make it more abstract. I don't know anything about this stuff, so maybe not. But if you want to at least put the idea in their heads, feel free to add a comment like that to the issue. Did you talk to me? No, I was actually talking to ah. Sergey. All right. Yeah, I know you don't want to do it, Clemens. <laughs> I, I, would want, I would want them to go, to go and use MVP. But well, you could, you could put that in, as a comment in there too, if you want. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. All right, so uh, next one. So I opened up a PR last night, so obviously it's too soon to even think about approving it. However, I did want to draw people's attention to it. Uh, there are two main things in there. One, actually, I guess three. One is I added the new specs to the, uh, to the checking tool that we have. So now it will check for things like the RFC keywords or capitalize and stuff like that. As a result, I did find some cases where we're using the keywords in non-uppercase, and I believe all the cases were not meant to be using the RFC keywords, so I changed those, but please look at my changes to make sure I did not change the semantic meaning. If I did, it was a mistake, and let me know. And then I think there was a one bad href in there. So these are all mainly syntactical type fixes, but in particular, if everybody, but in particular, uh, Clemens and Mike, if you guys could take a look at my changes and make sure I didn't change anything um, by mistake, uh, that we, I'd appreciate that review, okay? All right, moving forward then. Multi-part mime. Where are we on this one, Francesco? Uh, to be honest, this week I didn't any progress at all. To be really okay. honest, I just looking at the comments, try to reply, but I didn't look at it at all this month, this week. Okay. Would you like to have a discussion now, or would you rather wait until you've had more time to talk about the comments and? So like that, it's up to you whether we talk about it now or not. Yeah, let's let's keep to the next week. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. If anybody has any concern, or just put in the comments. Also, yeah. uh, I, I also remember to people that uh, there is also another proposal I did, which is far simpler to implement, and it's a, and it's based on JSON streaming. So, sending multiple JSONs uh, delimited by two characters. Okay. Clemens, I think you had some, some thoughts on this one, but I didn't see you make any comments in there. You, would it be possible for you to, if you get a chance to add some comments uh, in here? Yes, I, I just have not been able to do any homework. This yep, week. that's fine. Okay, just wanted to put a little nagging reminder out there. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And it, of course that applies to anybody else. I just, Clemens was the only one I remember speaking up. Okay, so that's it in terms of actual like PRs and stuff. So last night I did find some issues that I thought might be worthy of discussions. Um, just to see what people thought about them so, so we can clean out some of the backlog. Um, Francesco, this one is yours as well. And I apologize, I meant to actually reply back to you. So why don't you talk to what this issue is first and then we can have a discussion about it. Sorry? You wanna, you wanna bring everybody up to speed on what this issue is about so we can have a discussion? Yeah, so basically I started implementing the, uh, the distributed tracing extension. And I, found, and I found something that, to be honest, it's not cl uh, really clear to me, uh, which, that, uh, which says that um, the, uh, uh, when you send through HTTP, you could potentially contain both the uh, transparent as a cloud event uh, extension and as an HTTP header matching the trace context uh, W3 spec. And it tells, and, and, and the sentence after is not really clear because it tells that I should use the cloud event uh, extension in case uh, there are both in the same envelope and they don't match. But this doesn't really make sense because uh, if you go through a middleware that is not cloud events aware, uh, it will, uh, and, but is tracing aware, it will use the trace context header and not the cloud event extension header. We had a long debate about this. Yeah, and I, I, and I, I, I think, okay. okay, I think what I, what I tried to write yesterday probably came out all wrong. But what I was trying to say yesterday in this comment was 
they can both appear in the message and they can be different because the actual trace header may change as it goes from hop to hop to hop, right? But at the final destination, if they're different, my recollection was that if you actually want the real tracing value because you understand W3C tracing, then you go to the tracing header. This, this, the cloud event version one was in there more for historical purposes to say what it was at the beginning of the flow. Yes. But, it, but it's not actually meant to be used for tracing per se. Yeah. Okay, so what, uh, what, which, which of the two uh, should a middleware use? A middleware that is both uh, trace, uh, tracing aware and cloud events aware. Use it for what purpose? Well, that's, that's not, I mean, the, this reasoning is not clear on the spec. <laughs> I know, but, but, but you said the middleware wants to use it, right? And if the answer to my question is, well, they want to use it because they want to adhere to the, to the tracing spec, then they should use the real tracing header. Yeah. Okay, so if I need to commit the span, uh, a new span, so, uh, and, and I need the ID of the parent span, I need to use the one that is in, trace, uh, in the trace context headers. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the idea, the idea, the, the, the thought here was for, for those two to coexist is there is an end to end concern for tracing. And then there's a, a concern for tracing when it comes to the infrastructure pieces. Right. And you want both of those activities anchored in the same or origin context, but effectively all the, the, the offspring contexts form effectively a tree. So the, the cloud event is effectively, that's giving you kind of this, the original context information. But then if you're just routing, let's say you're routing an, an, a cloud event through a chain of multiple HTTP um, uh, lambdas, right? And then the cloud event shows up on the other end. The application might actually not care about any of those HTTP hops but it only, it only cares about the end-to-end -end scenario. So it takes the original cloud event, the, the original context that it sits in the cloud event and uses that to, to keep going. But then if you look at the HTTP side, the HTTP side will actually have, have traced all, use that same route to go and trace that and will, it will have used the, the HTTP um, context information. So, so, so the, the tracing information basically just forms a tree and it has a shared route but we're effectively carrying both of those contexts with uh, the cloud events um, uh, uh, transport mappings. Okay, uh, I, I, to, to be honest, I don't have this big knowledge of tracing, but my question here is uh, that, that I don't really get is why uh, in the end-to-end -end case, should I care about the original trace parent when the tracing infrastructure already does the linkings with the middle trees uh, with the middle spans, right? So uh, if I'm a, if the sender is a, already committed a span, a span with, the, with the original transparent, um, the, the, the final, uh, the other end of the, uh, of the flow is able to link back to the original tray, uh, to the original span. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you're running, if you're running in the, so let's say you're running in a cloud pass infrastructure. Right. And then there is the in the cloud pass infrastructure is a ton of stuff that you don't see and that you don't care about and that you also don't have any insight into. Um, for for that cloud for for the support folks in that cloud infrastructure to be to be able to help you with a particular case, they need to have an anchor for that for the, the trace and that is your original event. However, for your own application level tracing, you don't care about any of that stuff that just happens in that cloud infrastructure, but you're effectively just calling, you just care about your own publisher and your receiver. And those are linked through the information that sits in the cloud event. I Does see. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that completely makes sense. Well, I, I but the, again, this is not clear in the spec. Are you okay with, uh, if I do a PR to, to yeah, we had a, we had a super long discussion. There was a, a, a there should be a um, there should be a fairly lengthy um, issue thread or PR thread that talks about that. Yeah, that is closed. I'd, yeah, this, I'd have to go try to find that. This was a giant, giant, very <laughs> long discussion that occasionally got heated. 
if, if you want to write some new text for that for that spec, then it'd be most appreciated. Okay. Because clearly it's not sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the... I mean, it, to, to be honest, I understood the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it's me, but... Well, I think it's probably this right here, right? Must use a cloud events attribute. Yeah. We don't say, what, we don't say what you're using it for. I think that's the part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, must use, must be used the cloud event attribute for what? Yeah. So, so how about, how about, um, so now, now that you know the, 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 um, uh, the explanation of how we thought about this. Yeah. How about you make a proposal because you have now fresh understanding, um, that will probably be better to clarify this than, um, than anybody else. Okay. Cool. That would be much appreciated. All right. Thank you, everybody. That was a good discussion. All right. Um, GraphQL. Mike, would you like to talk about the GraphQL today, or would you prefer to save that for another day? I mean, I, I haven't prepared anything to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Let me ask the group. Also, there haven't been any comments on the issue. So, like, if, if people are if people want to just let that fall by the wayside and never discuss it, that's you know, that's fine. Well. well at some point, we either need to do something like a PR or close at one of the two. But since, and thank you for mentioning that no one's commented, <clears throat> um, maybe that's the next step is to use this opportunity to nag people to comment on the issue. Um, I, I know Clemens, you had an opinion. I want to say Jim might have had an opinion, but I'll, let, let's give it at least another week to, for people to add commentary to the issue. And then we will circle back around next week and see. Okay, and I'll make a note to remind everybody to, 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 I'll send that a note to remind people to talk about it or to think about it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, next issue. Francisco, this might be yours. Oh, it's not, Never mind. So I wanted to get somebody who's a Kafka expert to have an opinion on this one. Anybody have any thoughts on this one? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not just you, Francisco. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I can take a look. Yeah, I can take a look too. Okay. Yeah, if somebody could just comment on this, because I, I just, I don't know Kafka well enough to be able to have an opinion. Yeah. Well, this is right. This is, this is, the, um, I, I agree with that comment here. Is that we only currently have it? We we have uh, JSON as the as our canonical structure format, but yeah, if we have other formats, so if we're if we're coming back to protobuf or if we're adding Cbor, then of course having a self-contained structured event in Cbor would just just as well be um, applicable here. So. Um, So yeah, th this is this is unnecessarily constraining. So I, <clears throat> what would be the change of any in the spec? Um, can, can we can we look at the actual wording? Um, Kafka spec, okay. Implementation may. I assume it's probably here. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I think if we strike and encode the event in JSON, then we're, I think that's the unnecessary restriction. Yeah. Is that a breaking change though? Because I'm interpreting no. the must to go with so the and. It's not. Because I don't think we're, it is. We're, 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 Huh? We're making something less strict. Well, as a receiver, if they're assuming it's going to be JSON because of the must, are we now going to break them if it's not JSON? Well. And I don't know, maybe it's not an issue if we just made a, we it just came with a mistake. Yeah, so so I think technically, I think technically yes, but um, 
so technically, yes, it's a, it's a breaking change because of the, but I'm not sure how much it really matters to actual implementations. If they are using, you know, if they are in the spirit of the rest of the, in the, the rest of the, uh, doc, the, the docs. And, you know, today, mostly all imp implementations will probably have a JSON bias anyways, even though they shouldn't. So if we were to strike this, and claim that either it did not go with the must or we were just flat out mistaken. Yeah. Are I people okay with that? I think it's an error. But would everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. I'm not hearing any objections. Oh, Heinz. I just have a quick question. Isn't this kind of intuitive? If you can't support headers, you can't do binary mode. So you can only do structured mode, and structured mode is JSON. So I'm not sure where the conflict is. It, it's, it's, structured mode is not always JSON. Structured mode can also be CBOR or Avro. So we don't have an we don't have a CBOR binding, but we have an Avro binding. Okay, so you're worried about the fact that it's a JSON structured mode versus just structured mode in general? Yeah, because because Kafka just carries binary and doesn't actually care about the, the shape of the payload in its value. Okay. Yep. Now, now it makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, does somebody want to open up a PR for this or do you want to push it back to the original author asking them for PR? Anybody itching to do a PR? Okay, fine. I will poke the original person and ask them to do a PR. I just wanted to add that in Kafka 0 0.10, there was content type support already, which means that uh, some level of content negotiation can be done and uh, JSON will come with application JSON and Seaborn and others will come with uh, their own content types. So even if it's a breaking change uh, due to must change to should. Uh, the implementations that handle the content type already will just continue working. Yeah. Okay. Not cool. to mention that uh, Goang nor uh, Java SDK, they don't support uh, structured mode in Kafka. Not yet. No, no, no. Yeah, Golang, mm -hmm. Golang SDK support it now. Okay, maybe I can talk about it later. A V2 should. Yeah, and SDK Java will support it too. Okay, anything else on that one we need to discuss? Okay, next one. All right. Um, do we have any Avro pseudo experts on the call who could comment on this one? I'll give you guys a second to read it. Anybody know Avro well enough to comment on this one? Semi. I uh, care to go any further? <laughs> um, can, can we can we take a look at the the schema? If I can get to it. Um, Click on the here. Is, is neither that one. <laughs> Okay. Oh, no, 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 that must be the same one. Right. This one then. So I assume well, that's an example. The schema. Is this the? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Let's okay, see if it's this one. Hold on. Is he talking about the fact that attributes is under fields? Yeah. And that we only have, a, that we have exactly attribute and then we have a map for the attributes. Um, the, reason, the reason for that was, 
if I remember correctly, that um, we uh, we basically just wanted to mimic Jason um, in in Avro rather than than make basically bolt down the event um, structure. Um, into into Avro per se, so we actually didn't want to make it as strongly typed as we could because of um, uh, extensions. Because if we if we um, um, so we could have special case the 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 fixed event, the 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 fixed um, um, uh, attributes um, and then created an extra bucket. Um, but that would not have been effectively in the spirit of uh, of the the rest of it to have a bucket, so we to make it all even all in all in one place. That's what we chose chose a map if I remember that all correctly. And then data um, should also be able to carry structured information, and that's how that um, comes about. That you can basically go and take a JSON object as we allow in JSON, and then you can go and basically just transcode that into the into the data element. And of course, you can also just put a, put a byte array in there if you wanted to. So, so is, it, is it not technically allowable in Avro to just put all the map entries as top little things as siblings to data? Um, as sil no. So I mean, this is effectively, th this, is a, this is a schema that doesn't, that doesn't represent the cloud event, but it's a schema that allows you to go and serialize the data. So it's not it's not a validation schema that tells you whether the, the the event is correct or whether the event has you know all the all the fields have all the right values. This merely allows you to take a structured cloud event and just put it on the wire in a, in in um, an appropriate way. Because the Avro serializer is driven by that schema, just like Protobuf is. Ryan, your hands up. Yeah, I think it's an interesting distinction. So you're, Clemens, if I'm understanding you correctly, th this is really just the the encoding, the the implementation of encoding for Avro, but doesn't represent the canonical schema itself. Is that correct? Yeah, and and, and is that and, is that the way that we think about the other representations as well? I don't remember. Um, well, I th so the goal was to keep this so things were all in motion. Um, and we had, um, you know, this notion of extend. We have this notion of extension where you can go and add whatever you, what you like, and the 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 predefined attributes are also optional, um, it, to to a large part. And uh, so I think the argument, and this is not me defending defending the structure. I'm just trying to recall what, how we got there. Um, is that you should be able to go and take. An event similar to JSON, and then just encode that into. Um, so it's it, this is effectively the same tagged value approach, if you will, that ha that JSON has, but expressed in Avro. Uh, Heinz, your hands up. Oh uh, yeah, just a quick question. Uh, having done some recent work with. Uh, Avro serialization with both Apache and Confluent. Uh, it makes sense on the serialization part. On the deserialization, though, I found what uh, it spits back after you get the consumer record is the actual JSON data from the deserialized Avro message. So you're saying this will spit out the correct JSON for the consumer it's after it is deserialized? No, it's going to the actual gonna, part of it. It's going to give you the right object graph, not JSON, but object graph. The way how that's the JSON, problem, huh? It the consumer records. If you're doing it, for example, with Spring Cloud Scream libraries against Confluent, it gives you back a consumer record, and in the consumer record, it gives you back the value out of the object. And the value is always represented as the JSON object that was deserialized from the Avro message. So I'm just, you know, so as long as it will spit out the result of the standard libraries of your actual JSON representation that you expect for cloud events, uh, if that's doing that, it should be fine, right? If it's not, that should be a concern. Yeah, but that's, that's the, 
arguably that's a choice that the that the um, that the serialization library makes. Um, well, because what, what this well, will yield. With a... Sorry, go ahead. So what this yields is effectively you get a, an object with two fields. And one of the fields contains all the attributes and, and the other field contains the data. So it's slightly off from how the cloud event looks in, in, in JSON, but that was never the design goal. Because what you do use both the, if you want to do a custom serializer using the Avro libraries for Apache, or when we did it with the Confluent Avro serializers and deserializers, um, you're correct. The uh, when you do the cogen to create the pojo from the Avro schema, it does allow you then to update the uh, record and automatically have it uh, stored as a serialized Avro object. However, in both cases, when you consume it and deserialize it, it always gives you back a JSON representation of the object. Yeah, and that is, if it's not giving you back a cloud event JSON message on the deserialization. Um, I'm wondering if that's going to be an issue because you're not getting back cloud events. It, it, it's surprising that the thing even gives you a JSON and not just an object graph. Well, I was surprised too, which really actually bothered me because then to actually work with the large result of the JSON, I had to use the Jackson libraries to reserialize it against the JSON schema just to be able to manipulate it, or I had to use some you know, primitive uh, JSON libraries where I called it up and I had to pre know the fields, which is not a big deal, but when you got an IDE, it's kind of silly. Well, that's that's a good question to ask Confluent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, again, I'm sure it's easy enough to test for whoever created this is, you know, take a JSON message uh, or a uh, take the Avro, serialize it, and when you deserialize it, what JSON do you get back? If it's not the captive JSON, oh, sorry, if it's not the cloud event JSON, then you're probably going to have to change the uh, Avro schema. Uh, no, because Avro is Avro, and so there should not be. If you're doing, if you're sending, if you're if you're sending Avro and you're getting Avro, then JSON should never be in the picture. So if, if, if Confluent decides that they run everything that has been ever serialized always through JSON, then that's their problem. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this feels like an implementation detail. Library. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, this, I mean, this feels like an implementation detail because Ever actually has two different representations or two different encodings. It has binary and has JSON. Um, and like it, Avro is not JSON, Avro is Avro. And then JSON is a representation of its specific encoding. Um, that you can use with Avro, but it's not Avro. So I, I, I'm sure I'm understanding. I, I, it sounds like you guys are saying that there may be a bug in somebody's implementation of the Avro to JSON mapping. Uh, no, what I found is if you have, if you don't represent the Avro serialization or the Avro schema, when you deserialize the message, it and again, you're supposed to be able to, from the deserialized, switch back and forth between Avro and JSON. Um, by default, when I tried it with, and literally did this last week, where I tried to use the deserialization using the Avro libraries, using uh, uh, Apache, and uh, uh, Apache Kafka, and I tried it again with the uh, implementation from Confluent, where they provide their own automatic goal. Uh, serializers, deserializers. If my schema did not match what I wanted the output to look like when I went to use it as JSON, it actually spits out JSON as the value from the uh, Kafka record when it deserialized. Yeah. So that's a so okay. so that's the, there are two problems here. One is that Confluent gets JSON into the picture, which is weird, um, and then the <laughs> second is. The way how the way how you should do transcoding, and that's also something we we had discussed, is we have this we have in, in all in every SDK we have this generic representation of what a cloud event is in memory, and the the formatters that are using the format specification 
they serialize into and from that generic representation. So if you come from Avro, you go to, in your SDK, to that object, and then from that object down to JSON. But of course, if you're expecting that the wire format of Avro maps directly to uh, the wire format of JSON, that's, that's never been a design goal. Well, the design goal of Avro was just to compress the data when you serialize it to make it highly efficient for transport or storage. But you're still, when you take Avro, you will then create a POJO, if you're doing this with Java, from the Avro schema, you will then apply the fields that you want to update, just like you would if it was JSON uh, 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 POJO uh, from the schema, and store it or send it, in the case of Kafka, and when you receive it, it expects to have that available as data, but the data in both cases it spits out was JSON. Yeah. So, so, but that's not, so the way how we're doing, uh, the way how we're restructuring the SDKs is we have a notion of what a cloud event looks like in memory. And that, that is, that is independent of all serialization formats and that will work for CBOR and that work will work for everything else. And from, you should be able to go and take an Avro document, deserialize that into, into a cloud event, that, that sort of representation. And then you should be able to serialize that representation into JSON and, and there should be no mismatch whatsoever. But there, there can't be an expectation that if you take Avro, an Avro schema as this, this year and then turn that into a serialization object and do a raw deserialization, what you will get is the immediate representation of the structure that you have here, which we chose in particular to put Avro on the wire. But that is not the cloud event. The cloud event that is one further mapping step which takes the attributes and puts them into the attributes and takes the data and puts them into the data in the abstract data model that we have. So let, let me go to Ryan. His hand's been up for a little while. Ryan? Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to go back to like the original, um, just, just thinking about the trade-offs here. It feels like we're trading off type safety for extensibility of cloud events, right? Because if we were going to ex if, if there is going to be a new extension for cloud events, that means we would need to create a new Avro schema if we were going to do this in a type safe way. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> off the top of my head, um, but it feels like that's the trade-off that we're, that we're making here. That, 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 that was the, the motivation because every cloud event can have arbitrary extensions. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing that you said at the very beginning Clemens resonated with me, which was, all cloud event attributes, spec defined or extensions, were meant to be treated as siblings to each other. Correct. And that 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 was a big motivation for us. So Scott, your hands up. This is actually the exact same issue with protobuf, um, where you you give up the type safety for uh, extensibility. So if if, uh, if it affects this thing, uh, so one idea for protobuf was that uh, what what if the as the thing gets versioned and spec and uh, extensions get promoted up into the proper spec, they the the object gets migrated out of the extension bag and into the strongly typed spec like like these pieces. Mm -hmm. I wonder if if for uh, strongly typed specifications like Avro and for protobuf, it actually makes sense to keep it as bags for extensions and then uh, have a little bit of middleware shim to help you pop the extensions out and make them top level uh, at the last mile. Anybody want to comment on that? Or are we, are we opening a can of worms? Uh, there's there's pros and cons. So the the um, just in terms of prior art, um, so NQP chose to do have an approach like this, where um, there's a properties collection, which is all the commonly used fields to reply to from dates, timestamp, etc., um, and they are um, using a a schema where the metadata is then the metadata fields names are omitted, so they go, they're serialized by position. So that's similar to what you would do with portal buff or with Avro with the schema. And then there's an application properties bag, which where all the extensions go. 
The, re the reason why we, the reason why we, and this, this goes back to the original discussion that we had around extensions and whether we should, whether we will have bags. And the, the discussion that we had was, was if we have an extension and that extension ends up being so popular that everybody wants, that everybody wants it. And we then decide to elevate it up to um, a, um, uh, a proper attribute. So it becomes part of the canonical attributes. It's a breaking change because now mm -hmm. that attribute needs to go from the extension bag to the, to the top level set. Yeah. I don't want to go down that path again. It's already a breaking change, right? You're going to have to change the version of the, the spec proto. Yeah, but you don't, so with, with JSON, for instance, with, so with any tagged format, may that be JSON or um, CBOR or XML, for which we don't have mappings, um, it, the event wouldn't, ma wouldn't change. Yeah, I, I agree. Just, there, there, there things that aren't version like JSON, it, uh, it's easy to promote the extension to the spec and have the, the on the wire format not change, but that's not really the case for version protocols. Well, that that would be the case. So, if this work with with what we're looking at right now, this would also work. I think I think the point is you lose the the the, um, the type safety or whatever the proper term is, right? The well-defined types of the of the protocol. I mean, you can still. I mean, the validation is something you can still do. It's just you don't do it in the serializer. You you just do it at a step later, because ultimately. The, the in-memory objects that we have, they know what the types are. And if you give them, if you give them a, a type that's wrong, they'll throw. But, but doing that, you lose the, the reason why you're choosing something like protobuf. Like you, you can't, you, you're basically then just using uh, a JSON stream over protobuf instead of the actual proto. Well, you're still using the prototypes. You can't if, if you support extensions and go and version every uh, extension promotion. Well, you, well you, you, still, you still use the, the, um, the it's still protobuf serialized. It's just that you have tagged, it, it's just that you carry the stuff in the map. It doesn't, that doesn't work in practice though. Why? Because you can't, you have to tag it and the tagging is the, the cumbersome part. You, what you want is to send the, the int version of the tag, not the the JSON version of the tag. I, oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I know nothing about Avro, so I can't speak. No, you, but, the, but it's the same here. It's the same here. You, so yes, your argument is the 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 message will run long because you're including the tag. Yeah, that's that's right. And but uh, when you promote that extension into the core spec, then it's, it's still a breaking change and there has to be a last mile uh, collapse or you can't use the, the binary format of anything for the, the proper spec. So I'm gonna call time here because I have a feeling this is gonna, this could technically go on forever. Um, so I, I think I understand what's been said here to at least give an uh, initial answer back to the uh, person who opened the issue. I'll take a stab at it, and then you guys maybe correct me where I got it wrong. But I do feel like we should give this guy at least some kind of response because I get based upon his based upon his issue, it sounded like he was in the middle of actually implementing stuff, and I wanted I didn't want it to be blocked by us for much longer. Um, so I'll take a, I'll take an initial stab at trying to answer him, and then you guys can correct me, okay? Um, but I did want to leave time for Sergey to talk about his SDK testing stuff. Did you do want to? Take the screen. Yes, please. Okay, there you go. Go for it. Okay, I hope you can screen. Uh, you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a great specification, and uh, it answers many questions. But uh, when I started working with uh, cloud events, especially the SDK part, I was missing some guidance on how to test it, uh, which cases to test, and so on and so forth. And uh, for example, let's take a look at the HTTP protocol binding uh, specification, which is the most popular one, I guess. Um, it answers many questions. Uh, it also mentions some um, edge cases like uh, content type and that it should be, um, you know, even here it uh, says that 
may include char set and some other modifiers. Um, so it should be parsed. Um, so I start, started thinking how to test SDKs um, with the same set of tests. And an obvious choice for me is uh, Cucumber, which is um, BDD technology for uh, describing the test cases in some human readable form. You're not coding, you're basically writing some structured text and then this text can be interpreted uh, with, uh, with the language of your choice, be it Java, Golang, or basically any other language. There are many languages support that I'll talk about it later. So here, for example, I have uh, the same example as in uh, the HTTP protocol binding um, markdown file. So we just open it again. Um, yeah, it's here. So it's binary content mode. And then we have things like, um, headers prefixed with CE, uh, content type with char set, and uh, so on and so forth. So I'm just doing the same here in this Cucumber um, specification file. And I'm also uh, adding more variations with content type. So I'm just testing application JSON, but also um, mixed content, or not mixed content type, but content type with modifier. And I have the same for structured content mode. As you can see here, um, basically it's the same um, with the same variation of uh, content types. And I have the same for Kafka. Here, um, since in Kafka, there is no common definition of uh, how Kafka message should be represented in uh, text form. I'm just using key value pairs for header and the payload is defined as string. Um, it of course can also, have something like with base64 payload and some binary payload or whatever you prefer. And uh, the assertions I'm using, uh, I'm also checking um, the equality to some JSON, not just to some text or the string based uh, value, but JSON because some implementations may decide to parse, some implementation may decide to um, return um, the content as it is. So anyways, we just define, pro not protocol, but language agnostic uh, specifications and scenarios, and then we can run them. And here I'm using SDK Java. So I'm just inside the SDK Java project. I added a few files I'll show you later, and I'm running the specifications. As you can see, we have some failures. And uh, this one is the most popular uh, SDK issue, I would say. Uh, so. I can click and go to the specification. This is our uh, binary content mode specification. And we can see that char set is specified. Apparently Java SDK uh, does not split uh, the content type and uh, does string matching. And obviously application JSON, semicolon, blah, 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 doesn't match uh, application JSON. Uh, let me open the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So um, another failure is uh, binary content mode in Kafka. So if I open the scenario, it says that content type is application JSON and data content type should match application JSON. I went to the implementation, I'll not be uh, talking too much about the fix, but I just fixed it um, here in, uh, in the Kafka uh, implementation. Um, and now if I, okay, anyways, uh, if I run it again, I just added support for content type because previously it was filtered out uh, with CE prefix. Now it's green. So as you can see, um, the Kafka SDK works with uh, all Kafka uh, types of messages defined it in the specification, but uh, the binary content mode still has to be fixed. And I made the wrong uh, statement earlier today that uh, structured content mode is not supported uh, in the Java SDK, sorry. Um, I'll, I'll be talking about the Golang SDK later. I'll make a break to read the comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're good. And I would like to show you that it takes just a few lines of code or maybe a few hundred lines of code, but still not much to uh, run the test. I uh, have standard um, infrastructure for Cucumber Java here, and it defines steps like um, 
attributes should match something or uh, the map of attributes or the table of attributes should match or uh, the data should, should be equal to uh, some JSON. I can use any library I want uh, in the Java ecosystem because here I'm running in Java uh, to do some JSON assertions uh, and I'm not limited to what Cucumber provides, uh, uh, which is great uh, because it depends on language how it prefers to compare things or whatever. And the same applies to, uh, for example, HTTP steps. Um, as you remember, the payload was just the HTTP message uh, as it is on the wire. And um, I need to parse it. So here in Java, I'm using raw HTTP library to parse it. And then when it says parsed as HTTP JSON, I only need to uh, use SDK's uh, kind of internals, uh, but also uh, the part of the public API um, structures to test the event and then do some assertions later. As you can see, cloud event step is a generic uh, definition of steps. So that doesn't matter how you parse them from HTTP message or maybe from Kafka message. Here an example of the steps for Kafka. Um, you just parse it once, you set it, the current cloud event, and then you can run uh, standard assertions uh, on the parsed cloud event. It works both ways so that we can also do something like given some cloud event, we run um, or we spec it to be converted into Kafka message, into HTTP request, and so on and so forth. I know that some of you um, are looking at this and they're like, meh, Java, uh, but what about Golang? And I'll switch to VS Code where I have um, the Golang SDK. I have exactly the same, uh, actually reusing the same files, the same specifications. I'm not touching them and uh, you'll find the same specs here. Uh, that can be uh, and should be um, put to some shared repository or maybe even next to the specification if we go that, you know, that close to uh, running BDD style testing of the SDKs. And I have some code here as well to glue um, the steps and uh, the going SDK. So, here I'm just asserting um, the cloud event, uh, the same thing. Um, sorry, I'm not going developer um, and I had to just unmarshal JSON and compare it with the same uh, CMP that's used in other tests. Um, so I'm pretty sure um, folks from SDK, go, uh, sorry, from going SDK will find better ways of uh, writing the steps. And the same for Kafka, for example. Um, you know, we use Sarama uh, for creating the in-memory representation. And the same for HTTP. HTTP is, is a very simple one because we already have everything. And I only need to call this uh, binding.2 event. By the way, while working on the steps, it also helps to get a feeling what it takes to integrate SDK into some code base because here in Golang, we have this uh, wonderful binding to event method that takes care of uh, parsing the content type, the spec version selects which uh, SDK, sorry, which spec should be used. And in Java, we don't have it. So I had to add some uh, parsing myself in the step definition just to um, decide which SDK or which spec to use. Now, if I run it with Go test, the same set of tests will get two errors. And uh, if you look at the errors, um, and I'm not on the latest master at the moment, so please bear with me, um, we'll get two failures. Uh, first one is HTTP protocol uh, binding with structured content mode and the same semicolon, char set, blah, blah, blah issue. And the same with Kafka. So um, that's something I reported to Scott and uh, he fixed it shortly after. So if I just do git pull and run the same spec again on the latest master, boom, the latest master works great, um, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, for me, it was a great feeling of uh, just 
pulling the latest master and telling Scott that, yes, the specification is passing now. Uh, I can assure you that your fix is working and I didn't touch anything in the project code or uh, nor did I touch something in the test. And last but not least, I also have the same for V1 of uh, the SDK. And I know that uh, you're currently working on V2, but still it's nice to be able to run the same, exactly same set of tests uh, with uh, V1 and uh, get some results. So as you can see, um, a structured content mode is failing. Um, and um, what you can also see is that Kafka is not tested at all. Because I didn't find how to you know, uh, test Kafka with V1. So I just decided not to implement the step. And if I open the step definitions, just a second here. We just say, OK, I don't know how to parse Kafka message. I return pending. And uh, the result of uh, running um, the specification, running Cucumber, uh, will be passing or uh, some pending uh, features. So that if your SDK does not support some of the uh, features yet, then you can just keep it pending. And it will be a to-do for you, runnable to-do. Uh, to implement it in the future. And as the last, um, so last thing uh, from me about Cucumber and uh, this approach is that uh, it's a very popular framework and you'll find many implementations for many languages. And uh, as you can see, uh, there is Golang, JVM, JavaScript, uh, Ruby, um, and PHP and others. Most of the popular, popular languages they have um, Cucumber support. And if some don't, then implementing Cucumber support isn't hard, uh, just a bunch of rig exp, you know, how hard can it be? Um, and the language itself is Gherkin language. So Cucumber is just implementation of framework for Gherkin language, but the specification are written in Gherkin and you can just uh, use some other Gherkin compatible framework. Thank you. Okay, cool. And technically, <clears throat> we're about out of time, but I think this would be a great topic to bring up on next week's phone call for um, for the SDK meeting, because we meet every other week. But Scott, do you have something quick to, to mention? Yeah, I, I think it'd be really interesting to put this in the conformance repo and have like a compat table to show the integrations. Maybe it's not something that goes into the SDK implementations, but a separate thing that uh, tests released versions of the SDKs or something. Yep, so let's I would talk agree. More. Yep, we'll talk more next week. Um, Francesco, quickly. Oh, my hand went down. Okay, so in the last 30 seconds we have, let me just do a quick final roll call check. I think I got everybody except for Alex. Are you there? Actually, I don't see him in the list anymore. What about the other Doug? You still there? Nope, I don't see him either. What about, oh, I'm going to butcher it. I apologize. Descatia, D A S C A L I T A. Are you there? Uh, yes, that's <laughs> Thank you. If you can, that's great. If you, Don't worry. Yeah, if you can put your company name in the agenda, um, I'd appreciate it. If you want to be associated with a company. Absolutely. I, I want to start joining. I'm from Adobe. I work as principal engineer for a service Adobe. platform great. at Adobe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. I can spell Adobe. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Did I miss anybody else for the attendance? All right. In that case, excellent. Thank you very much for the demo. I really appreciate that. It looks really, really cool. And let's talk about it on the next uh, SDK you. call next week. All right, and thank you, everybody. Have a good uh, rest of the week. Bye. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.